What's happening? Charging the defibrillator. Now step back. Clear. Charging 360. Performing a cardiac massage. Checking the heart rate. Now step back. And clear. Keep going. More. Good morning, everyone. My patient was admitted yesterday with a cerebral hemorrhage. So I decided to operate on her. And it was successful. Was it? <laughs> Two hours after the said operation, the patient died as a result of a massive heart attack. The attempts at resuscitation were futile. I know that. I know. I should have considered a possible risk, like the patient's age <laughs> and the stress that she was under. Had I refused to operate, she wouldn't have had a chance. What chance? How did you manage to operate without even considering the patient's age? That's just... That's all just presumptive recklessness! Right. You were reckless. And you also ruined our department's statistics. Right. There are cases in which calculating the risk is nearly impossible. And there isn't a single surgeon who hasn't taken such risks and failed at least once in his career. Listen, Maxim, you may take your seat. Sit down, sit down. Now, I don't know what you all think about it. We rarely discuss such topics with one another. Maybe at home, right? With your family, if they listen to you. Nikolai, listen here, with all due respect. We're doctors, not philosophers here. What we're dealing with are more practical issues. We're doctors, yes. Yes, we are. And we're not in the courtroom, and there's no execution. There's no final exam. And we're operating on real people, not on blow-up dummies. And every one of them wants to live terribly, desperately. And if we have... If we have even the slightest reason to think that, we can save them, then we must save them, even if it might be reckless. You had a tough day, Dr. Maxim. Remember this day. So, where are we on operations today? Anything interesting? Yes. May I present mine, sir? Let me show you the x-rays. Retroclival meningioma. Patient is 53 years old, complaining about a coordination disorder. He was brought here shortly after undergoing a computer tomogram of his brain. The life expectancy of the patient is around two months. But complete removal is virtually impossible. It's located in the basilar artery. Right. Thank you. And just like you said, it is risky. But the patient is aware of what will happen if we refuse surgery, so he wants us to get rid of it. The procedure, as I understand it, will take a lot of time. Uh, you'll need a replacement. No, you know, sir... What is it? To be honest with you, it's impossible for us to divide the procedure into stages. You can ask our colleagues, even Anna can attest to this. A single anesthetic injection is less harmful for the patient than repeated exposure. With that said, I'd like to operate on my own, and I'll be needing the assistance of one of our chief residents. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like Bandaranga to assist me. Thank you. I have no objections. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now let's listen to Dr. Kasachenko's operation report. Well, I have no impressive results to brag. Anna, but just trust me on this. You'll see it for yourself. Oh, excuse me. You lied about As the anesthesiology see, report that I've never given here. you. Anna, 
You're being rude to me. The patient is 25 years old. Why is that? With an unruptured aneurysm of eight millimeters in irregular diameter, I'm planning to perform a clipping. I'm sorry, but are you sure that an immediate intervention is necessary? An aneurysm may not be life-threatening. Much appreciated. Apparently, Dr. Andreev's opinion is invaluable to the care of all of our patients. I'm sorry, sir. The patient is adamant about the operation. But as for you, Dr. Andreev, I would like to point out that you constantly criticize the actions of your colleagues. It's quite unprofessional. Dr. Mikhail, the patient's last name, is it Zvetov? Yes, Zvetov, and before you question me, the operation is paid for. But that doesn't mean... Yes, I understand. What? Uh, well, since all the chief residents are going to be busy... Pavel Andreev, he'll be assisting in this operation. All right. Good luck to us and to all of our patients. Today, Today and forever. forever. But hold on, sir. Why Andreev? And why not Andreev? Yeah, but why him? I want you to work together and find common ground. That's just great. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Is the patient ready? He is. Excellent. All right, guys. Is everybody ready? Mm-hmm. Let's do this. Scalpel. Marina, what's going on? Hi, Pavel. Hi there. I heard from Dad that you have a one-hour break right now, so I thought maybe we could have lunch. Uh, I may have said something wrong. I could have come up with a story, but I don't think I should. It's just that... Just ask me out. Pavel! <laughs> Hi there. What if someone gets into an accident? Hello. Forgive me for my impudence, but I really want to ask you out on a date. I'm not asking So will you? I get off at work at 8 p.m. and then it takes me an hour to get Yeah. So you know Oh, just give me five minutes to change. Alright. Three. Two. Two. <laughs> There should be an envelope for me. Could you check? Here you go. Mm-hmm. Is this all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. Saving people's lives? That is your story. I'm just protecting them, and that's all. You should have seen my dad's reaction when he found out that I wanted to be a lawyer and not a doctor like him. Yeah, your father can be strict. Yeah. It's as if my decision ruined his precious dream. And so I got into Moscow University, and we started drifting apart. How about you? Do your parents work in healthcare too? No. Mom did. Dad was an engineer. They died six years ago. I'm sorry. No worries. It didn't happen yesterday. It's a common accident. Snow. They crashed on a bridge. Oh. Right after that, I decided to leave. I thought it would be easier. I was shortlisted for an internship abroad. Well, I had a lot of work right away. There were all kinds of internships. Then I was asked to return by your dad, and I thought, why the hell not? That's it. Well, I think it's great. I mean, I'm really glad that you're here. 
My parents are such wonderful people. <laughs> wonderful doctors, but obsessed. They had me late, you know. My mom died when I was nine. And my dad... Well, you see, he... just works. And works and works. That is his only love and passion. Is that bad? Well, I think that is... Do you like anything other than work? Yes. Now there is. Good afternoon, sir. Dr. Andreev, I very much hope that while we're operating, that you'll spare me from your surprises and hear nothing of your enlightening remarks. Listen, sir. I don't want to argue with you. It's not in my plans, at the very least. My meticulousness can save someone's life, and that's why we're here now, right? I hope so. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please take a look at these documents? All right, Natasha. Come see me again in 10 minutes, All okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Dr. Semyonov. Oh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just stopped by to visit Svetov for a while. As you know, mm -hmm. his father and I have been friends for a long time. I really thought that you'd be the one to operate on him, and uh, not. Let's have some tea. Hmm. We'll talk. Let's go inside. I'll explain to you. I appreciate it. Now, what do we have here? Uh, so, shall we begin? Just relax, Dr. Andreev. Applicator. <laughs> Applicator. An aneurysm is when they're swelling or bulging in an artery. Here, take a look. Mm -hmm. This is a model of human brain. Here's the frontal complex. It's detachable. Pick it up. May I? Yes. Mm -hmm. I got it. And also this one. Now let's take a good look inside this. This one is called the Sylvian sulcus, and an artery is located in that area. Can you see that part? This right here is where the aneurysm formed. It's like a tiny bubble. It would burst at any moment, which then leads to a hemorrhage. Or it could not bother you until you're old. In order to prevent that from happening, we'll apply the method called clipping. It's where we would be clipping the bubble using a tiny metal clip thus eliminating any possibility of it rupturing. Looks good to me. Right. I don't get it. What's happening? The applicator's not releasing the clip. Congratulations. Oh, my God. Great job, sir. These stupid bastards. They wasted money. Why did they purchase a defective applicator of all things? That thing was defective. Just what were they thinking? Suppose something had gone amiss. I would have been accused of the patient's death. But doctor, look at this. What? The clip is misaligned. Where? On the left. Yeah, well, it's slightly uneven. So what? We have to correct it. The aneurysm won't disappear. It'll form elsewhere. <sighs> Applicator. Damn it. Replacing the clip is not going to be easy. It'd be less risky for the patient to leave it like this. 
So he'll have to live with a clip in his brain from now on? Don't worry. All our doctors do excellent surgeries. So there's nothing for you to worry about. But doctor, if we don't close it now, um, we'll lose the patient. Well, anyway, you can live with this, even for a long time. We can't leave it like this. Doctor, will you let me move it? Go ahead, Dr. Andreev. Uh... Doctor. Applicator, please. By all means. Thank you. I'm sure you can do it. Just finish it. Dr. Semyonov, you know I'll have to explain it to Svetov later. If suddenly, uh, God forbid, that something... Explain him to what? That the deputy minister's son now has a metal clip in his brain. Then don't tell the deputy minister. Just that the operation went well, that's all. How do you call that, that goof over there again? Sylvia... Sorry? Sylvian Fisher. Sylvia... Fisher. Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Kasashenko's glad with the result. Is you? It's not that bad. However, we should have checked the device beforehand. Another defect? Yes. Damn those lackers. Strelnikov is still operating. Could you join him in there and please tell him that the biopsy confirmed that the tumor is benign? All right. As for your out-of-town trip soon, I've spoken with their local doctor, and they're expecting you tomorrow. Uh-huh. And we'll set up a video conference just in case. Do you agree? Yeah, sure, of course. No problem. What about your latest scans? You got them? Yeah, I have it. Come see me once you're done with the surgery. All right. Thank you. Doctor, maybe you should take a break? No, let's move on. We're detaching the tumor from the stem and the fifth nerve. Dissector. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're now dissecting the sixth nerve. Excellent. You're joining us? Mm-hmm. Oh, Pavel. Done already? How is it? <laughs> Everything's fine. I'll take over for you. Go on. I see you got rid of the bigger part. I did, but not all of it. Can you see where it ends? Yeah, it drew right through the artery. But you're in luck. Dr. Semyonov said that the tumor is benign. You don't say. I wouldn't touch that tumor. <laughs> you might choose not to touch it, but I... I'll remove everything. And for what? I'll take it all. You've detached the main part. It's not pressing the brain. It won't grow. He'll be vegetative if you touch it. <laughs> He'll only be able to blink. Chill off for a bit, man. I'm begging you. I've severed all the nerves. 
I'm almost done here. Sergey, according to the biopsy... Pavel, if you want to help, then do it. If not, call me a resident. Just stop distracting me, okay? Uh, I'm sorry. Dissect her, please. <sighs> Pavel. You do realize that I'm writing a paper on this, so I need to completely... Go higher. Just a sec. If I go higher, I won't remove the entire tumor. Almost there. There, 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 there. Almost. What happened? This can't be happening. What, damn it? Blood pressure? Blood pressure's fine. All right, all right, give me a sec. I've almost removed everything, and you saw it! Calm down, Doctor. We're working. We must calm down. Coagulator. Uh -huh. Suction. Anna, blood pressure? No, that's it. It's still stable. No, that's it. What the hell? Yo, he's sniveling. Pavel, you saw it was an accident and what I could do. We'll talk later. Later. Sergey, Sergey. Dr. Andre. Let's continue. What are we supposed to do now? There's nothing we can do. It's strange that you and Sergei are classmates, but he never told me anything about you. Oh, that was long ago. There is nothing to tell. Is it a secret? We're not hiding anything. We were students. We forget stuff. And we'll forget this too. The patient's wife is sitting right outside the hallway, but I don't think Sergey can tell her. All right. Good evening, ma'am. Are you related to Lemeshev? Yes, doctor, I am. I'd like to know how the surgery went. Uh -huh. I want to see my husband because he was very anxious before the operation is taken. Please, come with me. Be careful. So he won't wake up? It's unlikely. I'm afraid he won't be able to lead a full life. Do you think he will be able to talk? Will he recognize me? I don't get it. But he's alive, is he? Forgive me for being blunt, but what do you mean by that? If you mean speech, memory, thoughts, consciousness, then I wish I could reassure you, but I can't. 
I'm sorry, but I have to tell you this. You have to make a decision. I'm sorry. Pavel, let's talk for a second. So, uh, what the hell was that? Did you talk to my patient's wife? Yes. What for? Sergey, it happened. <laughs> what do you mean it happened? What? You were walking, then suddenly you thought you should go and talk to her? She was sitting there. And so what? You came into the operating room, interfered with the surgery, resulting to hemorrhage. If the patient doesn't recover... You should recover, have stopped when I told you. Pavel. This situation could have happened at any moment if you... You know that's not true. Look, Pavel, I, I don't get it. What do you think you're doing? I find it kind of strange that you suddenly showed up. It's like you're shoving your way in, and Semyonov's pushing you to do it. So what is it? Am, am I in your way? Are you trying to get rid of me, bury me, or, or what? Have you gone mad? Hey, how are you? Oh, I'm doing well. You good? Can you imagine that? Honestly. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, look at that. You can see what's going on. He's meddling in everything, including operations. You're taking it personally. Why, don't you even realize what he's done? He just jinxed the entire operation. It's his fault. Sergey, when I was speaking at the meeting, I thought everything was about Dr. Andreev's professional ambitions. But Sergey, it's much simpler than that. Simpler? Well, tell me what it is already. Even if you argue, even if you have many successful operations, even if you surpass Dr. Andreev as a surgeon... If I surpass him? I'm telling you that you can surpass him. Because for Dr. Semyonov, you will and you'll still be number two. Do you know that? And do you know why? Why is that? It's because Dr. Andreev is dating his daughter. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I don't think you're making any sense to me right now. No, it's not nonsense. Sergey, I know what they are. Daddy's daughters, believe me. I know one. Mm. Hello, Lily. No, oh, nothing urgent. Where's Dr. Andreev? Sir Nikolai. It's gotten bigger. Yeah, that crap is growing. Dr. Pavel, you and I both recognize how this one is all going to end. I've thought it over. I spent a lot of time thinking. It's either a slow death or a chance but still comes with a fatal outcome. <laughs> for me, for me, the choice is quite obvious. Yes, Aminov. Yes, he's with me. <sighs> well, what do you think? Mm-hmm, thank you. Just like I told you, our shooter has been everywhere. He's already reporting her mishaps to management as we speak. We must prepare for the surgery. There's no time to lose. I'm prepared. Excuse me, sir. I know that you're busy, but I would greatly appreciate it if you discussed me in my presence. <laughs> what are you saying? What in the world made you think that we would be talking about here? I see. May I talk to Andrea for a moment? It's urgent, I'm sorry. Well, it must be so urgent that you barge into my office. Please excuse me, sir. I'll be back. What's going on? You tell me what's going on. Did you... Andreev, what are you up to? Did you just get brainwashed in the States? Brainwashed? Or, or maybe you want... What are you saying? Are you making fun of me? Stop playing dumb with me. You're sitting there, 
In the head doctor's office, hold on, I'm still talking to you and you're ratting on me. Do you even have the x-rays? Are you out of your mind? Look, Sergey, I won't tell Semyonov or anybody else about what happened to your operation today. I don't doubt your integrity, but on our meeting on Monday, you'll tell everyone about what happened. What happened today? Oh. I don't get it, Pavel. Is this patient related to you, or is it related to your father? I've said enough. I'm not done yet. What happened earlier was an accident. Now, I don't know what you want, but don't mess with me. An accident is when you have a plan of operation and nature intervenes over which you have no control. You took an unwarranted risk and that's no accident. That's recklessness. Good evening, sir. Could you please sign this? Get out of here! Go ask Andreev! Good evening to you too, Dr. Stralnikov. Marina, you have no idea how badly I want to see you today. I know exactly how you feel. What well, the problem is, I'll be leaving for a complicated operation tomorrow morning. So I need to prepare for it tonight. So please forgive Don't worry me. about it. I'm a doctor's daughter. <laughs> You're wonderful. You know that? I'm sorry, but I can't talk anymore. I'll be driving. <laughs> Bye now. Bye then. You're glowing. You had a good day. I see you've decided to keep in touch. Yeah, Dad. I'm sorry. I wanted to tell you, but it happened so fast. Okay, okay. <laughs> Are you buckled up? Yeah. Time to go, then. I'm home. Where is Nika? My father took her to the zoo. Because unlike you... He has time to take care of our child. So, did you buy a new phone? Then call him and tell him to bring Nika back home. And tell him that his friend Svetov is happy with his son's surgery. Oh yeah, I read about it. I even liked it. The guy even said that you're a hero, a wizard, a lifesaver. I'm shocked he didn't bail out on the surgery. Emma! Listen, I have never made any accusations against you, right? What do you want? All I want is a normal life. I want the woman I live with to show me some respect. But dad says that you should- I'm not interested. I don't care what your dad tells you. So next time, just tell him that it's time for him to leave my family alone. <laughs> Look who's talking. What would you be without my father? With your mediocre talent, you'd be doing appendectomies all your life in some rundown hospital somewhere. I strongly recommend that you learn to keep your mouth shut at once. Go and prepare dinner. I've been working all day. I'm awfully hungry.
Morning. Good morning. Leaving soon? Four hours from now. Want coffee? Yeah, I'm actually here for some coffee. <laughs> Relax, old man. This one's mine. I got lost. Mm. How right, much to the regional hospital? Ten bucks. Is that all right, man? No problem. Why the hospital? You sick, man? No, for business. Business, huh? Call me if you ever need a ride. Good morning. Good morning. I'm on tree. Uh, on the second floor. Oh, I see. You have a history of heart issues. Yes, that's correct. Uh hmm. You know, there's a chance your heart won't be able to take it. The operation will be very risky. <sighs> Doctor, please. I'm well aware my husband explained it. I've signed all the necessary documents and I'm ready. Doctor, please. I'll do it. Why did you tell me that she's your wife? I was afraid it wouldn't allow me to operate. You do realize that she's contraindicated for resuscitation, right? Yes. Semyonov said he was willing to take that risk. And you? I've been living with this for months now. Hello, sir. Take a look at this. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Have a seat. Here. Thank you. You didn't come over today. Sorry. We're about to start. <sighs> What's going on with you? <clears throat> Tell me. You're starting to get on my nerves. I've read about it. I saw the X. All right, everyone. While they're still preparing for our live stream, let's first discuss our pressing concerns. Yes, yeah, Sergey. Right. My patient, uh, the tumor that that was removed, 
It, uh, <clears throat> it led to... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just a minute. Just a second. It's working. Just a moment, Hi, everyone. Please. Good afternoon to our colleagues. We're grateful to you for taking the time to join us today. Good afternoon, and good afternoon to our colleague. Is everything ready for the operation? Yes. The operation is scheduled for 1,700 hours. We're still in the process of preparation and verification. No problem. Take your time. We'll be here. Thank you, Doctor. Everything's in order. Uh -huh. Dr. Alexander Dudin will be assisting. You have the brain scans, am I right? Um, we're sending the latest cardiogram now. We're waiting for it now. Patient is 37 years old with a giant aneurysm in the basilar artery. We'll operate with circulatory arrest under artificial hypothermia. We would also like to ask Doc Anna to provide necessary guidance on the anesthetic component during the operation. I'm ready to help, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Ready? Patient's ready. We're good to go. Good luck to us and to our patients, today and forever. <clears throat> Let's start. Scalpel. Opening the skull. Here you go. No sugar. How about you? You want some? Ready for stage the two. The hypothermia machine is connected. Got it. Igor. Sir? Please prepare the timer and sync it with their timer. 30 minutes? Yes. We've decided to go with deep hypothermia up to 60 degrees. Unfortunately, the patient's condition only allows us up to 73. You know, with that temperature, your time will be greatly limited. Yes, timer's set for 15. Copy that. It's very risky. You may not have time for clipping. Not being able to restart her heart is riskier. We have no choice. What's your take on this? I agree with them. I'll set the timer to 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Do it. Starting. It started cooling. Nurse, please come closer. Uh huh. Coagulator? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. How is it? Temperature dropped to 86 degrees. Pulse is slowing. For him to handle this aneurysm. The blood pressure must drop to 90 over 70. Prepare the spreader. Spreader. 14 minutes. That's perfect. Anna, how is she? Dr. Andreev, the pressure has stabilized. We're clipping. I didn't see. Did he check? Yes, it's working. Igor, timer. 9.36. Lord, please help him. Suction. Suction. Suction! Time check. 802. The status? Conditions normal. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is Dad in his office? Nobody went out at all. Okay, thank you. Dissector. Igor, timer. Two minutes. Time check. 140. Excuse me, doctors. 
I can't just sit outside and wait, Dad. It's more complicated than I thought. Time check. One minute and 30 seconds. Will he make it? He should, just so you know. I'm not sure I could have done it. <sighs> it's done. Inject contrast. Let's get the blood flowing. Yes, sir. The CPB pump has been switched on, increasing blood temperature. The time is up. We have no pulse. <sighs> Temperature? We're at 79. Now 80. Doctor Andrea. Now I can say that I've seen everything. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. I owe you an apology. He's a brilliant surgeon. Oh, thank God. Congratulations. <laughs> that was splendid. Unbelievable. <laughs> you, you have no idea what you've done. We, what we have done. Allow me to drive you back to your hotel. No, no, you don't have to. I'll take a taxi. Stay with your wife. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, fine. Yeah, I get it. We're on it. Good thing you're just in the neighborhood. Shall we go now? Sure, no problem. We're gonna have to take a little detour, though. Oh. Road construction. Yeah, sure. Mm. Hello? Pavel, how are you? I'm all right. The surgery went well. I was watching. I was worried. <laughs> it's better than I thought. I'll return soon. Tonight? I'll get some rest and take the first train back. You don't know how much I miss you right now. I miss you too. I'll see you soon. Yeah. I love pancakes for breakfast, you know. Bye-bye. <laughs> Kisses. Bye-bye. By the way, how long is the drive to St. Petersburg? What just happened? Call an ambulance. Hey. Hey. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hey.